Hello everyone and welcome back to The Negative. I haven't really done a film stock review on this channel yet, so today we're going to be looking at J-Lane dry plates. These particular ones are the J-Lane speed plates, they're ASA 25, and they're orthochromatic. Orthochromatic pretty much means that anything beyond the yellow color spectrum is going to be pretty much invisible to the film. So in this picture the girl's wearing a red dress, and since the film can't see it, it renders very dark. The cool thing about the film not being sensitive to red is that you can load it under a red safe light. Once you've shot film for long enough, you'll know that it's kind of hard to mess it up. If you for the most part know what you're doing, you'll pretty much get a decent exposure every time. So one thing I like about the dry plates is that with their limitations, it gives you more of a challenge to get the image right. So when photographing these pumpkins, I knew that they were going to be a little dark because they're orange and that's outside the visible color spectrum of the film. But they're also shiny, so a lot of light was reflecting off. So there is some light areas, but you do have to kind of think about how everything's going to end up being that the film is not sensitive to all colors. Another characteristic of the dry plates is with their ASA 25, they are super fine grain. So when you photograph something with a lot of detail, you can really see that high resolution. For things to be mindful of with the dry plates, being that they're ASA 25, you're probably going to have your lens wide open if you're shooting portraits. So you'll either need a lot of light or you'll have to have your subject like very still because your exposure times might be like an eighth or a fifteenth of a second. Another thing you have to be mindful of with these is when they are wet and you're developing them, the emulsion is super delicate. So you can get these little artifacts where the emulsion kind of rubs off if you're not careful. With these dry plates, I think they look best when you scan the whole frame. So if you're somebody who likes to crop and post, I think it looks a lot better if you get your image right in camera. When I first started shooting these, I wasn't under the impression that I was gonna like the whole frame. You know, I thought I was gonna crop and post. So when I shot this one, I didn't care that it was crooked, but I think it looks way better when you scan the whole frame. Overall, I really like shooting dry plates. They're really fun and they give you a unique look. And it's something that can mix up your photography if you're really used to shooting film and you're looking for something different. I will give one disclaimer though. The only special piece of equipment that you need is a dry plate holder. So you will need to get this, but otherwise everything is compatible with your normal large format equipment. I've already made a video on everything getting started with dry plates, so I'll link that in the description if you guys are curious to check it out. All right, before you guys head out, if you could pause the video and let me know in the comments, would you guys ever shoot dry plates? Are you interested? And if you have shot them, let me know how you like them. All right, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on The Negative.